friends, today we've got a video for you coming out about how to use Yodelbox as a live streaming device and set up your entire show using it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Lots to go over today. Let's get into it in just a moment. That was a little close there, wasn't it? Friends, we got a lot going on today. Have to have that intro music playing for you. Okay, guys, today I want to talk to you about Yolo Box, specifically how to stream, but more importantly, how to set up your show. Okay, so this is a this is a, tor a tutorial overview. Of course, I'm recording it live just for you guys so that you can see exactly how this kind of stuff would happen. And this is how you would produce a show live if you're out there. I got some notes for you. I'm going to share with you all this stuff. Expect this video to be long as, of course, this is a live stream. So as it's a live stream, I'm showing you how I do it live. It could be some technical difficulties on my end. I'm streaming at 5,000 kilobits per second. That's five megabits. Should be good to go. I've got a couple of different demos I'm going to do for you. Today, we're going to be talking about all kinds of stuff, specifically audio transitions, video, setting up your encoding, just a little bit, title lower thirds, and using GIFs, right? This is an awesome way to really make your, uh, your entire setup just look amazing, okay? We're going to do that here. we got three or four different ways to do it. Number one, you got this right here. Number two... You've got the computer that I'll show you how we're going to make some stuff in number three. I've even got my out coming up over here so that when it's time to look at some things, I'll be able to make sure that you guys can see all together. This is not sponsored, as you saw earlier. If you like any of this, don't forget to buy me a cup of coffee using the PayPal and the Amazon links down below. You can do that. This is not sponsored. Once again, Yellow Box didn't ask me to do this. I'm doing this because I enjoy live streaming, and I want to share this with you guys. If there happen to be any questions, I'll pick them up in between the different sections. We're going to be talking about show setup, and this is not about how to, um, you know, set your encoding directly. It's not about how to choose a platform directly, and it's not about how to do a network test. I would assume you've already got those two, uh, those tasks down. What we uh, will be covering is the things we talked about a second ago with audio transitions, titles, and stuff like that, and it should be quite a bit should be quite a bit of fun. Okay, so we're going to jump right into it. So let's go to audio. So audio is going to be something that we find up right here. I want to bring you over here, and I'm bringing you to my audio section. Okay, so audio is very important. And I'm going to get out of the way so that we can kind of see this. I want you to see as we're scrolling. You're actually seeing the yellow box screen right here. And the first thing you want to note is that we've got a program in and out. And that program in and out is going to be your main volume. Currently, we also have a monitoring volume. You've got to have that set to on. Now, both of these things will allow you to set up your different uh, sounds so that you can hear it and your guests can hear it. Generally, monitoring is being used for your headphones so you could turn it up or down. Currently, those two things have to be on for you to set up all of your your audio more importantly we want to talk about what you want your audio to do right so for example we've got a couple of different cameras we've got this angle right here we've got this computer right there and then we've got all of those listed over here what we want to make sure is that in our audio panel we've actually got set up what we intend to use and in this instance we don't want our audio to follow your video if you're ever out there recording and you're doing live stuff and you and, and you're working and you've got multiple cameras, there are instances where you may want to use live audio from each camera and have the audio switch as the angle does. Usually that's not very helpful. Um, and if you would usually want your audio to be in one source, one location, normally through a deck or something. Currently I'm using the Rodecaster Pro over here. I'm running all my audio through that. I've got my different bumpers and my uh, sizzlers and my different songs over here that I can play. You can hear it, I can switch it out ocean okay so i've got a way to trigger those cues as i want and i've got a board that i can set everything to unity and send out all of my microphones go into there so since i'm using this as my board and everything i don't want the audio to switch between each and i would suggest that when you're doing a podcast or something like that or you're doing something live attempt to run all of your audio through one device if you're going to use wireless audio you can do that through the use of something like task cam port capture you can run that directly into here and then run all of your autos uh, audio sources into the task cam from wherever they're coming could be wireless doesn't have to be in any event you want that all to come in and in this instance i've turned off all the other audio except for my mic in 
Yellow Box has a couple of really cool different places uh, to get audio. One of them happens to be mic in on the back. You can get a mic level or a line level. If you don't have a mic plugged in or a line level extension plugged in, those won't pop up. But since I do, they're there. Now, I've gone ahead and set everything to Unity Gain across all of this stuff. And that's so that I'll be able to have you hear me as I switch properly uh, between camera and camera. But if I had multiple people, I would want to make sure that my microphones were also set to the same gain level so that when we were switching between people or people were talking, there wouldn't be a lot of, uh, a lot of sound jumps. In that instance right here, you would usually do that on the device going in. But if you were using separate microphones or camera audio specifically, you could adjust that with these sliders right here. It would work great. Audio is pretty as simple as that. There is one thing that I have, local videos. Now, I've got a couple of, of videos. I'll play one right now. You'll be able to see that as it pops in, there's a local video. We're going to talk about that later. My local video does happen to have audio attached to it, so I make sure that I turn that off. And the reason local video has audio attached to it is because that 20-second bumper that I've created, which I'm going to share with you how to create later in the video section, um, that may need I may need that audio that little background music to play when that plays if for some reason I'm, I'm in a pickle, <laughs> right? And I don't have uh, a music or a bumper track or something like that. So I leave that in there on the SD card video and all the SD, uh, all, the, all the videos that I would make. I've got one more over here, which is my outro. Now notice when the outro pops up, it's black for just a few seconds, six seconds, five seconds, and then it goes to my bumper credit scroll. The reason that it goes like that is because I'm going to want to put some kind of overlay on top of it usually the one that I use in the beginning. Again, the, uh, that video has audio, it has music, has outro music. It's not this outro music, it's something different. And that music is something that I use uh, when I don't have, well, different audio sources come in. I may want that if I don't have this particular deck or if I'm not using the podcast mode up here. You can load songs onto this to play and trigger just like that just like the roadcaster. If you don't have something like that, then that's a good place on your video is a good place to have uh, intro and outro audio. That being said, audio is not something that that is really easy uh, when it comes to acquisition, right? Because of copyright and different things, you need to make sure that the audio that you're using is actually, well, copyright protect, well, not copyright protected. And if you're streaming to YouTube, you can get that from the YouTube studio over at... Um, well, maybe we can pull it up right now. We can come over here to our YouTube studio. I'll show you down here. Go to your studio. And then you can go to your audio library right down here. See that? Now, now that you're here, you can search thousands of different royalty-free music genres, sound effects, whatever you want, in order to be able to have some music that you can download to your computer, use to make a video later, which we'll talk about, and then... You don't have to worry about having copyright strikes and things like that. Another thing that you can do is if you do happen to have a YouTube partnership, uh, you can stream audio that may be copywritten and your, your content will stay up. Audio is a big deal. We've spent some time talking about it, but here are the must-knows. Turn your audio follows video off under most circumstances. Make sure that your mic and your board are set to Unity and send it into Yolobox test to make sure that the audio on Yolo Box in the slider right up here, the program from your monitor, as well as your mic in, whatever you're using, whatever your sources are, make sure that they're set to a level that looks like it's like it sounds good. And then up here in the corner, make sure that you see your audio in the green, not clipping out to red or yellow. If it goes into the yellow every once in a while, you're getting a little hot, but generally you're gonna find it in the green is where you want it most. Okay, my friends. That is a, that's a big conversation that we've had just to talk about audio, and uh, it's about time to move on. So moving on, transitions, my friends. We're going to be talking about transitions next. Transitions. Think about it. Videos look great when you have transitions. That bumper that you just saw came through is kind of a transition. We're actually using it like a transition. But I want to bring attention to uh, the transitions that we have here in Yolo Box directly. And we can get to it from our program feed, right? And in, over here in our program, we can actually see our video source transitions. Now we can set these to different types of transitions. 
as you can see here, I've got a different kind of zoom that's going on. As you can see here, I can go back to like the squeeze or whatever. There's all different types of transitions that we've got here. I generally like wipe for most of my stuff. That's a pretty good one. Sometimes I'll use directional wipe or fade, but this is where you're going to set it. You can set fade to black and you can also change the duration. Play around with those and find one that matches the type of uh, production that you're doing. What's important with transitions is that we, we want to use them to cut bet to cut between different pieces of video, right? And so when you've got guests and things like that that might be on here, you could use a transition, a different kind of transition to a, jump to a guest that may be far away or different kind of transition to jump to a detail shot. Currently, you can't set different transitions to different shots. So that means that when you're running the show as a program editor, as a show monitor, that you're going to have to change that transition yourself. But it is something that's pretty easy to do, and it's something that you can do easily live while you're streaming. If you're running your business like Yolo Box and you're providing live stream as a service, and you're the show producer, whether or not you're the director uh, doesn't necessarily matter. But if you're running a live stream business where you're helping businesses live stream, you will probably be in the director role, understand a little bit what's going on, managing cameras in a small camera crew for your different your different pictures, your different looks, then yeah, you'd totally be a director and you would have the opportunity and time to switch this just like it is. So that means that while you're out and about on location, you can use Yolo Box as your director's monitor to go around and make sure that your transitions, your jump cuts, your fades, all of them are, are doing exactly what you want. Now, when we also talk about the transition, I wanna take us over to um, our video. So we're gonna talk about video, but transitions, are talking about and sharing. So as you think about transitions, don't only think about them in the idea of these uh, these different wipes. That's one topic to the next. That's your transition. And speaking of which, it's time to head right over to, of course, video. Now, video, this topic right here is a little bit different, right? When we think about video, we want to talk about these different sources that you've been seeing. We've seen three sources right now. But video is more than just that. We've got our local video. Uh, we've got our SD card video. We've got uh, our video that could come in through an additional source, right? I can't necessarily show you because it, it will disappear. But if I attempt to add another video source right here, uh, it may show. Yeah, I think it's showing all this stuff. You should be able to see all of these different sources that I can add. I can even create multi views and things like that. So all of these things are going to help you create video for you in another way. The most important part about them is that your video doesn't have to only be here. It can be pre-recorded, just like the local video that we've shown, just like my bumpers, just like this one that's coming in right now, and just like this one, so the black screen for just a moment, as you can see, right? And then it pops over to, of course, um, uh, the, the end credits. But we only get two slots for local video. So we sometimes need more pieces a video to use as transitions through our topics. Well, if we only have two SD card videos that we can use, our other option is to use, well, a computer. Because if we used our computer, then we'd be able to actually show videos on the computer and we could just click them. But that would be a little bit inelegant. It could become a little bit cumbersome, not only working with Yellow Box, but then working with the computer. But there is another way with that video that we can work. And that's going to be with transitions, specifically titles, specifically image overlays. Now, while we talk about that, I wanna make sure that when we load the video onto our computer or we load the video over to our uh, YOLO box, I wanna show you how you actually get that video. So we're getting ready to transition into the idea about uh, overlays, but I wanna show you how you make an overlay like this. This glitch overlay that you just saw right here, I want to share with you how to actually make that. And to do that, we're going to take it right back to uh, my computer, my computer. You guys think that's funny, computer, right? Okay, so right now we are in Premiere Pro. Now, we don't have to be in Premiere Pro. You can be wherever you want to be, right? But in Premiere Pro, I've got several different glitch packs and assets that I've downloaded. It's important to know that you don't have to buy assets from people. If you're watching this and you would like for me to create some custom assets for you, reach out to me. I will. I've got five different assets that you've been seeing here. I can give you those for $25. Just send it to PayPal, put assets in there. I'll be happy to send them over to you. 
If you want to call me and talk to me on the phone, I can create something special for you around the $25 to $50 range so that you can have something custom for your entire show built out. I'll do that as a, a helpful thing. Um, usually that kind of stuff costs more or you do it yourself. But in any event, transitions are things that you might use in a different way and you have to get them somehow. So someone's got to create them, whether you buy them and someone else made them or whether you make them or whether you make something on Yolo Box with some of the title overlays as well as these video transitions, one way or the other, these things have to go. And that's how we're talking about this now. So we're over here in Premiere, right? And we know that we can export this particular video if we wanted to, which is just a, a glitch video, as you can see, not even a long one. We know that we can export that glitch video and it will be some kind of video. But this is kind of, this is just a glitch. It's not like what you saw a moment ago, right? So what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna uh, bring in another piece of content. I think this one right here, I've set some endpoints and out points. This is nothing more than a, uh, well, just a, um, I can't think of the word. It's just a video of Boca. You see it in the right screen over there. It's kind of playing like that, okay? And I want to make about an eight-second eight video, so I'm going to clip this down to about seven. So I'm just going to use my cut tool, and I've clipped it. I'm going to select it and delete the part that I don't want. Okay, now I need something else. I've got a... This would be great, but I need one other thing because currently all this does is that, right? And I need to add a little bit of character to it. So I come up here uh, to my promo, uh, my Premiere Pack, and we've got I've got some assets, titles, glitch transitions, assets. Let's see what's in here. These are all my glitch effects that I've got, and then I should have fast lens transitions. We could actually use. Well, not one of those. Let's see if we could use titles, glitch, VFX, footage. Oh, we should have it right here. Okay. Yeah, there it is. Oh, so it was right here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab one of these. <clears throat> now, this is a an effect pack that is going to give me this little film look. You can see it up here, but it's not there. It's not in this bright, right program window. It's it's uh it's not there. It's in the source window. You can see that it's going to move like that, but it's not in the program window. So we need to go over here to our generated light leaks, the top layer. Come over here to effects, and let's see where is it? Project. Oh yeah, effect controls up here. And now we're just going to switch that down here to screen. Notice how it popped up. Okay, so we're good to go there. Now that that's done, I think I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit larger so I can see it a bit bigger. I'm going to, uh, yeah, that's what I want to do. Bring this down. Move those videos up. Move this across. Select all of that. Alt, hold, click, let go. Now I said we wanted to make this about eight seconds long. So this is, uh, this is good enough for us right here. Click and drag this out, and then get my sound effect. Alt, click, drag, drop, boom. Now from here, you can't hear this. Actually, um, I'll go over to my audio tab on on my audio page, and I'm turning HDMI 2 audio on. And we should, I, unless I've got it, yeah, we got it down here. I'm going to turn it all the way up. Good, you should have been able to hear that, and now you can hear what we have here. Yeah, there you go. So now we got this transition and the audio. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and mute my audio once again. I'm going to turn my HDMI 2 audio off again too. Okay, so all we've done now is we've created a small video, but we need to figure out how we're going to export it because we need to export it in a way that's going to work with Yolo Box. Two ways to export it, right? Let's go back to it. Over here, we, we take this, we've got our video, and the reason we have nothing... Um, the reason that there is nothing in between the glitch and just the light leak overlay and the little scramble, the film effect, is because in just a second when we talk about overlays, we're going to use that spot in between to pair with an automatically pop up and hide, or at least an auto hide overlay that Yellow Box provides for us. So this one transition that we're creating will be able to work with all kinds of content that we use 
on Yolo Box, and we'll have it every time we want to use it. So every time we set up a show, we'll have this blank transition glitch effect ready to go, and all we have to do is change our titles. <laughs> you can't tell me that's not cool. So we're coming back over here. As everything's looking good, we just need to come up to export. Now, I'm not going to export all of this right now, but as we do, it's going to build it. We've got two ways to export it. We can export it as the video, H.264, and notice our file size, 17 megabytes. Yellow box can only stream at 8 megabits per second, 8,000 kilobits per second. So I would come down here to go to show more. I would also change uh, my rate, frame rate. I'll show you in just a second. And I would change my bit rate from 19 megabits per second down to five or three or four, it doesn't matter. So now it's changed. And you could also go ahead and change your frame rate if you wanted to. And then notice our size is only three megabytes. That's gonna make it really easy for Yolobox to send this out because we're creating a piece of content that is not over the amount that our encoder can regularly do. And this glitch transition is usually half the size of the transition that I would normally use, right? Or the encoding rate that I would usually set between six and eight. Okay, so that's going to allow us to export it as H.264, which is a video file. Now, we already talked about video. We're In fact, right now we are talking about video. This is the topic of video. We just created a video. And we know that we only get two video spots for SD card video. So when you think about your show, you've got an intro, so if you've got an intro video, like we've seen it, the intro of mine, and we've got an outro, there are your two SD card videos. So what do you do? Do you just juggle? Do you just delete one and then add the other during the show? You can. That would definitely work. I've got a better suggestion. Not only should you export this as a movie file, H.264, but what if you also exported it as a .gif? Adobe's got animated GIF right there. Check this out. We're ready to go. Once we click export, this whole thing is set up. All we have to do is render that out by clicking export, and then we put it onto Yolo Box, the SD card, just from regular SD card transfer. And once we do that, we've got something that's really cool. I want you to see that I'm currently in, I'll move back so you can see better. I'm currently in Yolo Box, and you see I've got the overlay panel. Right? This is my over. This is my titles and overlays. So I think this would be a great time for me to share with you how to transition to titles and overlays. There you go. I just tapped the GIF for the title I exported and the overlay, and both of them disappear at the right time. So I want you to see that right here, I've got this as a GIF. If I go to click Add, I can add an image overlay, and then it says although it's blocked out a little bit, it kind of shows you right now, it shows right there that I've got my GIF overlay. You can kind of see it if I move back. So it's right there. So now, how cool is that? So now we've got basically another motion video, GIF picture video, motion video that we're using instead of an SD card video. So we can save that SD card video for more important stuff. Now, something important to know. Yes, you could do your intros and outros as GIFs. That would work, totally work. There is no audio on a GIF. You can't use audio. When you set your GIF, when you create all of this and you export in Premiere, you're going to need to make sure that your frame size is correct. 1920 by 1080 should be your default. And if we had our intro and outro or different special bumpers set up as GIFs, as you could see like that, we would have all kinds of different video that we could set in there for our SD card video, which would give us the ability to have product teasers or on location stuff or a documentary thing or a music video, something that we recorded earlier and produced and we wanted to show we could use that as the SD card video. I want to come back over here. As we talk about these things, right? Okay. I want you to notice that scrolling up and down, I've got all kinds of stuff. So as you see my Yellow Box tutorial, that is nothing more than a title that I created. Notice how it disappears as well. Think about that. One less thing to manage are these really great <laughs> titles and overlays because they auto hide. 
Well, how does that work? Let's actually just create one. So if we wanted to create one, I would simply click this. I've got my lower thirds and everything right there. In this instance, I'm going to go to a title. And as a title, you can see I've got all different kinds of titles to choose from. Yellow box might add some more. You can load your own. You can make your own. You don't really need these, but these are great on-box titles. So if we wanted to create a your text here, there it is. Now we're seeing this display of it. This is kind of what it looks like over here. And we could enter whatever we want. We could enter test or test right here. Okay, so I've clicked test. I can now also change the font, as you can see. I can change my color of the text. One. Okay, we'll change that back to white. Okay, you can set a custom color as well. You can even change the transparency of the background. You even have the ability to change your corner radius right here. As you can see, I'm adjusting that. And the horizontal padding. This is going to let it focus out a little bit. Vertical padding, you can make them bigger or smaller. And then you've got a dimming color. Notice how I can dim everything. That's kind of like your overlay. It's like your, you know, just make every, that's your opacity. You can change the scale. And then here's my favorite, auto hide. Turn it on. Get another sec section right here. Take it down to just, I'm going to set it for three section, seconds. Done. When I'm done, now on Yolo Box, I've created this automatically hiding thing that pops up. Check this out. One, two, three, and it fades in and it fades out and it goes away. It can't get any easier than that. When we use those things in conjunction with this, things get easy, right? Check it out. Now that lower third, like this video, is, this, is made the same way. And it lasts a little longer, but it still has an auto hide. I think I've got it up there for 13 seconds or something like that. So you can create these titles all from using just one or two different pieces of video that you create earlier, just like that one that you saw right there. Real simple overlay. That's not the only thing you could do. You could also, in Adobe After Effects, create a title sequence that has 3D rendering that would normally render out as a... a um, light boxed, light ray traced image, right? So that you had all this really cool effect, but you could export that out as a GIF as well. No audio again, and then you could use that. So there's so many ways to use this, this text and overlay section that it's, it's really just, it's pretty exciting. All right, friends, it's time to get up to the, fa the final part, which is the show setup. We've been blasting through this stuff here, but I wanted to make sure that we're getting through it. We're getting through it pretty quickly, even considering that it's taken a minute. I, I need to go back to uh, YouTube to talk to you about some things on the computer. But before I do, when you set up uh, your device, you have to think about your platform, right? You have to think about where you're going to be sharing. Now, we've got this. It's live. It says that I'm live right there already. It's got all the other places that I might stream. And we have this option to stream to Yolocast. Now, Yolocast is a subscription service through uh, Yolo Live, which brings everything that you're doing on Yolo Box, except it puts it onto your computer. Now, it can be kind of expensive, it looks like, between $60 and $150 a month or more, depending on what level that you need. But it's giving you all of the power of Yolo Box on your computer, which means more processing power, more efficiency, higher everything. So if that's something that you want to do, you could stream using YoloCast, and you can do all kinds of stuff. I have not used YoloCast. I don't need it for myself, but I may do a review of it at some point in time. Uh, just depends. But here we've got the simultaneous broadcast as well, so we can go live to any of those places. So we recognize you're going to have to set up your stream. I suggest, well, YouTube. YouTube, because of the partnership and the content that you can create on YouTube, and then being able to stream without having your uh, stream taken down. If you do have any copywritten content that pops up, YouTube will allow you to do that with a partnership. Well, that makes it simple. Facebook won't let you do that. Twitch won't let you do that. It will be very difficult. They take streams down. You might have a little bit more leeway with, twi um, with Twitch because they're used to streaming copyright stuff through game content quite a bit. But the other thing you need to think about are your encoding settings, right? 
And so here, I want to stream as best I can, made sure I did my network test, set my encoding settings. That's all the stuff I expect that you already, that you already know. But the next thing we want to talk about is actually how we make our thumbnails. Now I've got an Adobe subscription, so I come over here into Adobe Express. I can use it on my phone as well, and I can create the thumbnail that I want. I've got all different types of things that I can do uh, right here, right on it. And I can add text, I can add pictures, you know, and because I've got an Adobe subscription, I can get all kinds of these premium photos as well. So we just make something that looks cool. This makes it very simple. But once we do, we also need to make sure that we're going over to our content section and going into, like, for example, this particular one. There weren't a lot of views there. Some of you guys might like to look and see. But you guys, I make this content as a labor of love for you all, for those that need it. And then we set up our live stream. So we download that thumbnail and we upload it here. We can't get to that spot in YouTube Studio through the Go Live panel, which I am not going on to now because it will change some settings because currently Yolo Box is streaming as an all-in-one device. If I open Yolo, if I open YouTube Studio right now, YouTube Studio will open, everything will work, but it will handshake and the majority of the controls for starting and ending a show and things like that will happen on YouTube because it recognizes that the computer is on YouTube Studio, Live Stream Manager, in a doesn't say live, it says ready. Okay, and it'll show public or whatever you've set up. Then when you come over here to YouTube, in the live studio, you will be able to, you'll have a page that's similar to this. This is not it, but you'll have a page similar to this where you can put in your show notes as well as your thumbnail. That's very important. What you will also have the ability to do is set up a trailer or a bumper. So if you have a bumper that's created live to get your audience excited about something you're doing, so if you're doing live sales using Yolobox as your live stream device, you can actually set up a small teaser video that talks about the product you're going to sell before you go live to sell the product. If you want to talk about a new video that you got coming up next week, you can announce it that way so that people that join your show and are waiting for you and get that notification that you'll be live at such and such time when you schedule it. The ability to set up your tags, very, very important. Down here through Show More, you really need to set up whatever tags you're going to be using to help people find your content. And once that happens, all you have to do is go live. Guys, this has been quite a bit of fun. We've gone through several different things. We're going to bring that sweet music back in. I'm going to check and see if there happen to be any contents. <laughs> I got Frank he says hello. Hey, what's up, Frank? No questions right now, but that is totally okay for me. What I wanted to do is produce this for you so that you'd have a reference to how to make this show work for you. Now, a little bit of the behind the scenes to all of this is pretty simple. The show needs to work with what you're doing. So for me, on location, today I'm using Yellow Box Pro, two cameras, plus a computer. I am synchronizing my video through a wireless transmitter so I can do my program out to this screen so that you can see it <laughs> like that. And those things are what's helping me stream live right now. So, if you have any questions, it's really simple. It's easy to find me. Leave a message here. Leave a comment here. Let me know what you're thinking. If you have some uh, questions or you would like some help setting up some of these trailers or bumpers or want some more, I will absolutely help you do that stuff. But if it's more than a question like that, it's a phone call or something like that, then we need to chit-chat. You need to buy me a cup of coffee. This stuff takes a lot of time to go through. But for most of you that are out there, I'd say 99% of you that are getting started with this, this just showed you how to unlock the true potential of Yellow Box. And for those of you that need a little more one-on-one -on -one stuff, I'll give you that coaching session. No problem. Guys, I'm Rob. I've had a great time with you all today. I hope that you have enjoyed this. I'll keep checking it out 35 minutes into the program, and we made it happen. Well, thank you so much for watching. I'll remind you that I will catch you guys on the flip side. Bye for now.